things going on. So welcome everybody. Today is February the 4th and um, this is a new human experience podcast and the topic tonight is called the human condition. <clears throat> when I uh, googled for uh, some images to to create for the human condition I actually found out that there's a book and there's also actually a movie called The Human Condition. So I've never um, read the book nor the, seen the movie. So I have no idea whether there's any connection at all. However, what I wanted to, to um, convey through this is that like, in, even though we are each and every one of us is unique, we are unique human being, um, like everyone has a difference. There's something unique about our body as well. Our fingerprints are unique. Our uh, DNA is unique. And spiritually, our soul signature, our frequency is also unique as well. So yes, we are each of us unique. However, because we are all playing on this playground called Earth, so there are also commonality. There are some things about being uh, like living in this on earth and participating in the um, like bigger reality of what's going on around the world that there are some things that that almost every human being um, know there is some commonality in that and so that's actually what I want to talk about is because um, the idea is that there's each of us came here to play on this playground so that we can move the, the, the collective experience forward, if only by just a little bit. That's what each of us came here to do. So, and there are some, I think the, the word for it is called archetypes, meaning that it's something that everybody knows. For example, um, the idea that we have a mother and a father, or, you know, at least one parent that, um, so, so we, each and every one of us, as long as we um, have a, a body, we, uh, that's something very common. Each of us, whether we know who our mother or our father is or not, we all know that every human being has a mother and a father. And um, so all of that is something that is very common to each and every one of us. And that's actually what I want to focus on today is to take one of these um, archetypes, as um, more specifically the archetype of parents because um, parents is something that is very fundamental, is the first, they are the first people, most of the time, they're the first people that we come into contact with when we first incarnate on earth. So that's why I want to talk about um, parents, the idea of a mother and a father. And each of us, have a relationship with each of our, of our parents. Some, some of us know both our parents very well, and some of us may not even get to meet any of uh, either of them. However, we still know within our psyche that we have this idea of a um, some sort of somebody who takes care of us. We expect that when we come on earth, that someone is going to take care of us. So that is some sort of, um, that's, that's something I would, I think one of the, the words that I can use is that it's a program, it's something that we expect when we come on earth. That's why as a human being, we came in as a baby. We came in as um, some, this, the baby is really not very equipped to take care of itself. The, the baby cannot take care of itself. So this, we really have to rely on our parents or some sort of caregiver 
to take care of us. And the reason why I think this is one of the more important um, archetypes or um, commonality that I want to look at is because it ties into a lot of things. It ties into so many other things. That's the primary relationship that we get to experience when we come here. So it actually sets up this whole human journey. And so that's what I want to talk about for today. And um, next week I would visit some other archetypes theme. However, today it's about parents, it's about mother, and it's about our relationship with our father as well. So um, when I researched and, and do, um, you know, all the, 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 the thinking for this podcast, it's like, even though I have an idea of what it is that I want to talk about on this theme, it's not something that is easy to articulate for myself anyways, because um, there, there are so many ways. And um, so I'm just going to at lip, let's say I'm just going to, I'm, I, I'm actually wrote something, but I'm going to throw that all out and just really focus on um, why I want to, to visit this. It's because um, it's about authority and this, the idea of authority, which is really um, about what the idea that we expect someone else outside of us that is benevolent and takes care of us and has um, in some way have, have some authority over us. All that relationship, I think it's something that when we go, we are stepping into a new dimension, into the fifth dimension, that is something that is um, a program that we have to, or, or, or that is time for us to completely turn that inside out and see whether we still need that or not. <clears throat> so why do I say that? Because, you know, um, you may, you may think that it is inevitable. We have to have mother and father. We have to have this. But um, as actually, no, we don't. It's um, it's not it's not a necessary. It's it's not something that is necessary. It, it was necessary when we are playing in three D in third dimension or lower. However, when we get into some of the higher dimensions, the idea that we have um, that someone else would take care of us and that we, um, we are under the authority of someone else. That is an idea that is, um, that's an old idea. So that's what I want, want to start to look at. And so looking at that from my own perspective is I was, when I was thinking about this is try to regress to when I first come on this planet as a, um, as a consciousness, as a consciousness. And I took on a um, body. So I, I, I decided to, to go with what everyone else is doing on this planet is to, to experience this reality through a body. And this body came out um, from my mother's womb. And even within my mother's womb, I was as a, a consciousness, I was actually, because when I was still in my mother's womb, it was like, I'm, I still have a lot of my um, access to who I truly am as spirit. So all that before, before I was born, all that was still in there. I, I still know that. So as a consciousness inside my mother's womb, I actually have a chance to 
really get to know who my mother is and also the lineage that my mother came from and also got to know about my father and also the lineage that he came from. And so as a consciousness, even though um, it is something that at a human level, at a at the brain and mind level, it's something that is very unconscious, but at, at a spirit level, we all, each and every one of us, know that we, we have that, that information. We were able to sample what life is most likely going to be with these, um, with these set of parents. And also um, we would, even before we were born, we were actually at the soul level also start to communicate because it is when we actually get to a body that we, that we um, start to really work closely with our entity. So a soul is the cosmic part of our, uh, of our soul. And then the entity is the earth, the, the, the more earth components. So we would get that some of the information that would be being passed between us. And um, I know when I'm talking about this is something that is um, most of us may not rem may not even consciously remember it now. However, it is something that at a soul level, we did that. We did that. We have all of that interaction even before we were born. And at the, um, however many, uh, how, how much time, however much time we spend in our mother's womb, that's when we were all, all of this, we are swimming in all the soup and, and because as a, a consciousness, um, there is no such thing as, um, how should I put it? Our fixation with our body, our identification with the body, it's something that happened after birth. Before birth, we, um, we actually, our consciousness knows everything. We know we actually are able to see our mother and see our father, even though we weren't even born yet, but consciousness, our consciousness know that. We have all of that communication. And, um, and when, we, when our, our body gets uh, born, that's when we start to really get the identification that we are this body because our parents um, played that part to convince us to, as, as, we, as we come out of the, the, the womb is that we are this little body and that we are this helpless being and that we um, need our parents to take care of us. And so this idea of parents taking care of us, we need someone else to, to, to take care of us. That idea is kind of starting to be ingrained into us. And uh, it's, it's something that we played with as an idea. And, and so this idea um, actually has a lot of other reinforcement is that um, instead in, in addition to parents, we have as, we have grandparents, and also when we started to go to school to learn, there are teachers. So authority figure that supposedly is to take care of us, and um, <clears throat> and also is um, um, all of this programming, and so then the teachers and um, also what else is, is there? So it could be older siblings, it could be um, it, then, and then when we get older, it's when we start working, it will be the bosses. Um, so people that are older than us, so um, elders. 
and also government, all of this. So all of this represents authority figure. And so there is this idea that mm, it's the authority figure is going to take care of us. And, um, and when we start to look at it within the collective psyche, there is so many other ideas floating in there as well. So why do I, I want to tick, um, why do I want to look at what ideas is being floated in the collective? It's because when we participate as one of the, the member of this collective um, at a very unconscious level, we get to go into the collective soup and really, you know, select and feel out and see, oh, okay, which idea that I, do I really want to um, play with in, in my lifetime? So we do this very unconsciously. However, <clears throat> I just want to, to make it more, um, make this more conscious is that we do that and we don't even know we do that. So we do that in many ways. We do that by observing how other people are because not all parents are good parents. Uh, not everybody has both parents and some people would have no parents at all. They are orphans um, or they may have, um, well, they may be, they, they are adopted. So all of these, these are all different ways of us understanding the this first and primary relationship with our parents with this supposedly benevolent um, being that we expect that would take care of us and and so in the collective there are good parents bad parents there are good teachers bad teachers good bosses not good bosses and um, and so many different ways, and there are you know good government, and of course there are horrible governments. Um, so all of these is what we get to play with. So at an unconscious level, all of this is what's playing in our mind, and when we look at what's really um, how we individually experience this idea of parent as authority, then we, no matter how good your parents are, I just want to mention that no matter how good, how, how much your parents try their best to be good parents, there is something off about this because at a soul level, even though when we incarnate on earth, we, we took the red, uh, we took the blue pill, we took the blue pill. The blue pill is we don't remember that <clears throat> we are spirit. So however, we don't consciously remember that we are spirit, but at a very unconscious level, that part of us, that, that spirit, our soul, is, we're still connected to it. No matter how much we are lost in the game, there is some part of us that actually still remember. And that's why this, um, it sets up this dynamics in that we have to play this game, but the game that we are playing is so far removed from where we came from as spirit. And it is really this, this inner knowing that there is something wrong. I don't know what it is, but I just know that there is something wrong that, that um, as a, I think as a, um, a baby, we, we kind of know and don't know. We, uh, as 
I think as a baby, we kind of know more about it, but because we, um, we somehow so, I would say so, so, so involved in this whole process. This is a completely new experience for us. We, as a spirit, we, especially if we uh, um, haven't had too many lifetimes on earth, then as spirit, we get completely lost in this human experience because having a body is, is something that is very um, different um, as spirit. So thinking about something versus actually having a bodily experience of it is two completely different experience. And when we take on the body, it is, it is, um, it can be quite, I would say, daunting to get out of, of um, remembering that we are spirit and that this body is simply a vessel for us to experience this reality. However, um, internally though, we it sets up this, this dynamic that even when we are born, we realize that there is something not, something not right. Because as when we are on the spirit side, we know that we are the, the authority, we are the creator. But when we are here, when we, when we actually take on an incarnation, all the programming is about the authority is outside and that we are helpless. So all of that, there is this kind of this, this twist around that sets up this um, idea, this, I would say, conflict and how we resolve this conflict is part of the journey of, I would say, the human condition. <clears throat> but it could be, um, it's, it's also the, the play as well. So for, for me, how I, like when I was trying this on and, and really thinking about, okay, so, you know, I got this mother and that um, I, I, I still remember that I identified with my mother very much. Like, um, and so um, there is this great bonding with my mother. And, um, and then my, as I, I was growing up, my mother really instilled in me this idea that if you work hard and study hard, you'll be able to, um, you know, create a better life for yourself. You're going to make more money. You're going to have, you know, good life, all that, yada, yada. So <clears throat> that was impressed upon me. So I actually um, embraced knowledge. And I, I really applied myself. I, I, I went to, I, I really take on studying very seriously or as seriously as, as I could um, with all the other distractions going on, um, hormones and all that. So, <laughs> so anyway, so the, however, what happened was that the more I, study, the more I learn, the less, um, the less my mother or that, that generation makes sense for me. That's, that's the, um, that's part of the journey is that the more I grow as a, as a person, is this, the struggle between, um, well, okay, it's my struggle. So maybe not everybody has that struggle, but that's part of my, my story is that it was, um, I, I remember the, the, the struggle actually came to a forefront when um, I remember, I, I think I, I might've shared this before, but um, 
I remember I was driving. I was I was driving. I was actually working for at least you know, 10, 10, 12 years at the time. And I had my kids already, or at least one of them, if not both of them. I forgot when that was. It's um and I I was driving, we actually going to IKEA, and my mother was was telling me this oh okay it's y2k so so it was, she was she read an article about y2k so she was telling me you know you have to research this y2k like everything is uh, like we are going to um there's going to be a catastrophe we're gonna die something like that so she was really alarmed and all that and and so at the time i was um um working in corporate and I was actually part of the, um, I'm actually responsible for um, doing the, the, um, the testing or I was responsible for the testing of our Y2K readiness for the system um, at the bank that I was working for. So it was, you know, yeah, I have to know my stuff and I have been working and I do know my stuff. And then my mother read an article and told me all of this. And I was, I really, you know, that was really stretching it for me. And I finally realized that I can't, I can't, um, I can't really align with my mom anymore. I have to find some, I have to find out the truth for myself because my mom does not really know what she's talking about. She knows a little bit, but she comes across as, as she knows everything. And I know every, every kid or every um, young adult, every teen would go through this. There, there comes a time when your parents does not make sense to you anymore. And you, you realize that and you have to make that choice that you have to go and make sense for yourself. And so that is, I think that's kind of where humanity as a whole right now is going through, is that we are, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of maybe jumping uh, all over the place, but there is a, I think there is a, um, the underlying is that as a, human collective, we're getting to the point where we don't, we cannot align with the idea that authority is outside of us anymore. I think that's what all of these, um, the, the, the political system, the, the health system, uh, like all of these different system is really authority outside of us. And, and so at that level, we are all getting to the point where we are almost there. And well, hopefully we'll, we'll soon get there. I'm not too sure how close we are, but I, I believe that we are very close to the point where we realize. And that is the idea is that we all have to realize on a conscious level that when we put any authority outside of us, that's always going to be, um, it's always going to be a struggle because um, it does not match up with the, the spirit inside us because as spirit, we know that we are the creator we know that as spirit we we know that as the um, the human experience we are getting to the point where we are starting to let go of the idea that we have to have authority outside of us and so that's why i want to bring this up because I'll, i can see actually talking to um a lot of you that have brought up this idea that there's a lot of, and you know, well, okay, s some of us are, uh, I would say more um, 
overt than others that we actually came to the the idea that we can't look to our parents for authority we actually can't even look at religion as authority and that's why um i think religion has been going through so much changes it's really our consciousness is getting to the part where we we don't accept authority outside of us anymore and so and that's why we are going through all of this all of this you know um politically on a health level on every level that we are getting to the point where we starting to become more conscious and remember the 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 spirit within us and starting to to notice the the dissonance between what is being um what we're playing with as a collective and what being the spirit within us is about and so there is this this conflict and each of us will have to find our own way to resolve this at our own pace and um and also in our own way and i'm not saying that um like for for me what i my journey was that when i finally realized i can't look to my mother um as telling me what to do even though you know i was a mother at that time and so it it makes sense to to um use my mother as a model uh, how to as how to be a parent and i really realized i can't because she does not know what she's talking about and the um, and then so i started looking outside and so i started looking at spirituality not religious but not religion but spirituality in the idea that i am spirit and that i'm not human that i am spirit and i think it is because at the um i don't know when i started to to really resonate and and um use that as my i would say that's my floating device no matter how challenging life gets no matter how bad things may be going on outside of me i i always get back to oh this is just this is just um a play that i am not the the body i am not the human i am the spirit that is experiencing myself as a human so so that really was the 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 spark that got me chasing after something different and that's really what got me starting to um look at spirituality and start to learn about energy start to learn about um like how do i connect with the spiritual part of me even though i've had some interesting spiritual experiences and and all of that i still you know it was it took me a while to actually get to the point where yes i know i am spirit but what does that mean and how do i actually connect more with that spirit part and and how do i make sense of that as a human being like it's all good and well that i am spirit but i still have to um you know make enough money to pay rent i still have to do all the other human stuff it like knowing that i am spirit does not um relieve me from all that so that however the idea that no matter how challenging things are i still remember that i am spirit that really shifted helped me shifted and made 
everything makes sense and easier because of that. And so I think that's why um, I want to talk about this is this is part of the, the, the journey of, of awakening. It's really getting to the point where we, we look at the dissonance within. And I know that you all on some level know the dissonance within, even though um, you may try very hard in your life to um, cover over it. Some, some people like to, I don't know, some people like to drink to, to cover over it, and cover over it. Some people like to um, focus on doing other things, taking of other people to cover over it. However, there is no covering over is that this is part of the journey of getting out of 3D and going into the fifth dimension is to come to grips with the authority within and also come to grips with how do we start to, if there is no authority outside, and we have to become the authority. What does that mean? And how would I live my life differently in order to start educating myself about what authority means? And how do I become that authority within instead of waiting for someone to come and save me? Uh, for spirit, other bigger spirit to come and save me is that, oh, I am the spirit. I am the one that is going to save me. So what does that mean? What do I need to do to, to um, really come to grips with that uh, on a human level? And so that is, that is one of the, the the human condition there are so many other ways that I, I say that there are so many other um different moving parts so this is really one of the the i would say the the most upfront and center one that um i want to talk about tonight so that's all i have to say and now it's...